Here are 10 simple settings that you can change right now to make your Windows 10 faster without buying any new hardware. As always, before we do any major changes to our system, you want to create a restore point. This is basically a Control Z or Control Z and a way to undo everything that we're about to do. So it's a nice safety net to have before making changes. Okay, in search, type the system restore and then you'll see create a restore point. Click on that. When that screen pops up, bottom right hand side, you'll see create. Give it a name, something that's going to make you remember that this is the point you want to come back to. So before optimization, as an example, click on create and then you're pretty much done. Now it's the same screen to get to your system restore. You simply click on system restore. If you ever want to come back to this particular point before you started making any of the changes, click on system restore, click on the name that you've given it, click on the finish and then follow the prompts. Okay, now that we have our safety net in place, let's talk about latency. We obviously want to reduce latency as much as possible and improve performance. And that's where the first two quick settings come into play. And back to the search bar we go. This time we're going to type in the graphic settings. You will see this particular app. Simply open that up. And when that opens up, you see at the top, hardware accelerators, GPU scheduling. This is what we're looking for. Reduce latency and improve performance. You'll need to restart your PC. If it's off, switch it to on. Another cool little hack is to be able to reset your graphics card by holding the control, the windows, the shift and B. And this will, will happen, your screen will go blank because it's perfectly fine and it simply resets your graphics card. Okay, look, Windows manages a lot of processors that are constantly running stuff in the backgrounds whilst we are working, streaming and gaming. Each of these processes has an impact on the computer's performance as Windows needs to allocate resources to keep those things running. So let's get rid of the stuff that we don't need to be constantly running and divert all that power straight back into our Windows 10 system to make it run faster on the stuff that we need running. Back to Windows Search, this time we're going to type in a background apps. So these are the apps that are currently running in the background. We want to see what's going on there. Simply open up that particular option and you will see that it says, hey, let apps run in the background. We want to switch that to off, switch is absolutely everything off or switch it to on and then manually go and select which particular apps you want to run in the background and which you don't need to, like a calculator, no reason for it to run. Okay, there are two more places that we need to deal with, which still has stuff constantly running in the background and here they are. In Windows Search, this time we're going to type in MS Config, and you'll see this app pop up system configuration. Click on that. And what we want to do is we want to click on services. Now, these are all the services that are currently running and some of them have already stopped. What you can do is firstly click on the option that says hide all Microsoft services. So all the essential stuff he's not even going to worry about. Now, Adobe, um, with things like Atom Service, Apple Mobile, like it doesn't really need to be running the whole time. So I can simply click on it and disable it. Now, do not worry, you're not going to mess anything up. And if you are going to have something go awfully awry, what you can always do is simply pop back into the same system, see the date that you disabled it, and simply go and re-enable it. Simple as that. Okay, so that was point number one. Once we've done that, what you want to do is go back to your taskbar, right click on it, and then choose Task Manager. Now, you'll see a screen that looks similar to this. It might look like this, which is a little bit the smaller version. Simply click the pull down arrow and then choose more details. Now, in here, these are all the stuff that's happening at the moment on your computer. You want to choose the startup. On the first column is the name, then the publisher, the status, whether it's enabled or disabled, and the startup impact. That's what we're interested in. Click on startup impact. And here you'll see high and you see medium and you'll see low and you see stuff that's not measured. So for example, Elgato control center. These are the lights. Do I really need them to have a high impact? No, I simply disable them. It doesn't need to be part of my startup process. And I can work my way down the list, find all the high ones and simply disable them one by one. And again, anything that has a negative impact on your system, simply click on it, click on enabled and you're back to running again. So when you're working or gaming on your computer, the last thing you need is Windows to start installing new software. You want Windows full attention and bandwidth to the stuff that you're doing. So let's switch on some stuff here as well. This everybody should have on. So you're gonna go into your start button, you search, you're gonna type in game mode. Now game mode settings will pop up, simply click on that and make sure that your gaming mode is set to on. When gaming mode is on, Windows optimizes your PC for play. 
Now I have found this makes also a difference even if you're not gaming. So I like to have mine on. And just to show you what it does, this is from the Microsoft website. When you use the gaming mode, essentially what it does is prevents Windows updates from performing driver installation and sending restart notification and helps achieve a more stable frame rate depending on a specific game and system. Now we want to optimize Windows for tasks that we wanted to do and not worry too much about making Windows look pretty. Performance over appearance. And of course, back to the start we go. And this time in the search, we're going to type the advanced system settings. Now, when that comes on, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're under the advanced tab over there so we can click on the settings under performance. And when that pops up, this tells you, hey, choose what you prefer. Do you want to let Windows choose what's best for my computer, adjust for best performance or adjust for best appearance? Or you can custom. So here's what happens. Adjust for best performance. Can you see how it unticked all these boxes versus adjust for appearance? And of course, custom, you can simply select which one you want to enable or disable. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me show you. I'm going to adjust for best performance and then click on OK. Now, watch what happens. Let's open up something like Notepad. And you can see how it just instantly appears on the screen. It looks amazing. But you can also see that the quality is not so great. Can you see how it's much, much more pixelated as opposed to what it was before? Now, let's change it to let Windows decide. And let me show you how that makes a difference. Look at your untitled notepad. And now let's look how better that is already. Can you see how it's no longer pixelated? And when I click on it, it's got this little zooming in effect, zooming out effect. So it seems a bit slower because it does this little animation. Here's the cool bit. You can go into your settings. So let me show you that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to select custom. And under custom, I'm going to start ticking and unticking boxes until I have Windows looking cool, but also performing nice and quick. Now, thankfully, Windows 10 has an automated way to keep your hard drive nice and clear so that it has the maximum space for all those temporary files that it needs to save and access. And you just have to set this up once. OK, what you want to do is go back to the good old search. And this time we're going to type in storage settings. Now you see a little app that looks like this. Simply click on that. And when that pops up, what we're interested in is the bit at the top. Now you'll see it says storage sense can automatically free up space by getting rid of files you don't need, like temporary files and content in your recycle bin. Switch that to on. But check this out. You see this configure storage sense or run it now? If you click on that, it gives you some more options. So click on that. And now it gives you an opportunity to decide when to run the storage sense. And during low free space, in other words, when you're running out of space, I want to run this every day, every week or every month. I kind of like to set mine to run it automatically every week that I know my computer has been looked after. And then delete temporary files my apps aren't using. I can put a little tick in there as well. Underneath it, delete files in my recycle bin that has been left for over however many days. Now, I don't like that. I like to click that to never. I want to control when I empty my recycle bin. And the same thing goes with my download folders. Now, you can let the system automatically delete stuff that's been there for more than 60 days or one day. I still like to set that to never so that I can control it myself. And the last option over here is if you want to clean now, if you're out of space right now, simply press the button. It will take your settings into account and then run through the cleaning process. Now, something that's pretty obvious, but things that are clogging up your computer, you want to get rid of. So something like uninstalling an app is super important. Search bar, type in add or remove programs. Click on that when that pops up. And of course, this is going to show you all the applications that you've currently installed on your computer. And you can choose to uninstall those that you don't need. So here's what I do. I go to sort by and then I choose install date. That's going to list all the applications by date order from the time I installed them. I then scroll all the way down to the bottom and I look for those apps that perhaps I'm no longer using. A nice quick way of doing that. But hold up, not all of us are running this on a laptop. We, some of us are running Windows 10 on our desktop. So let's not worry about battery life. Let's go for performance. And back down to the search we go, type in control panel. Now you should know the screen pretty well by now. And in the search at the top, I just basically type there power and then click on power options. Now, when that comes up, typically it's set to balance. I like to change it from balance to high performance. Again, I'm running this on a desktop. I don't care about battery life. It's permanently plugged in. 
If you click on change plan settings, it gives you the option to change the display and when, when the computer goes to sleep. So these are my settings, obviously change it to the one that suits you. But I click on change advanced power settings. See that one in the middle? Click on that. And then I make sure that under high performance that's active, I scroll down until I see wireless adapter settings. And underneath that power saving mode, and I want to make sure that that setting is set to maximum performance. None of the others set to maximum performance. So I also get the fastest Wi-Fi that I can. Right, now that your computer is nice and fast, let's speed up your Wi-Fi, which you can check over here how to do that. Check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here. I think it's down here to subscribe. And I'll see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.